Hello, I would like to welcome you to the third lecture of 2FH3. We'll continue in this lecture our discussion of coordinate systems. We'll talk today about spherical coordinate systems, uh, how we can transform from Cartesian to spherical and from spherical to Cartesian, and we'll talk about constant value services and we'll see a number of problems on these uh, points. We covered uh, chapter 2 from the textbook, pages 33 to 49. In some applications, because of the problem geometry, we prefer to use spherical coordinate systems. And the point in the spherical coordinate system, as shown in this figure, is defined by three things. First, the distance r from the origin to the point. So you can see from here, for this is this is the origin, and this is my point P here. The the line connecting them is called r, is is r, and its position vector. Uh, we call the position vector in this direction is called AR. Okay, so we can define the position vector in the direction of R. We call it here AR. Um, and um, this, and with the second type of coordinate we need to define is the angle that this position vector makes with uh, with the z axis. So it's called here theta. So this angle here is called the angle theta. And the last one, if you project this angle on the on this this point on the xy plane so it should give you a point here this point makes an angle phi with the x with the x axis um, uh, so there are three three parameters here uh, r uh, theta and phi and these dimensions or these coordinates um, they are not fixed they do change from one point to another for example if i select a completely different point here i would say a point here in this direction uh, if, if this is a point, the second point here, um, then uh, this is its uh, AR. Uh, of course, theta always increases. A theta, the unit vector in the direction of theta, will be in the direction of increase of theta, so it's always going to be this way, A theta. And the A phi is the same phi we had from the um, cylindrical coordinate systems, so it will be the third one normal to this system. So it's actually, in this case, it's going to be pointing in the uh, from out from the beach. And the reason for that is that it has to be in, uh, in the direction of increase of phi uh, on the, uh, in the xy plane. So, uh, so just a reminder here that both r, theta, and phi, um, their, their values do change from one point to another, and their, um, their unit vectors, the unit vectors in the direction of these, uh, in these coordinates do change from one point to another. Okay, so in some problems, this may be useful. Uh, one, one word of warning here I would like to, uh, to tell you is that the position vector here does not have uh, theta or phi components. And you can see that if I draw for you the plane containing the z-axis and the vector r. So if here, if here this is the z-axis, this is z, and this is the vector r here. This is r, this is the one connecting from the origin to the point, and this is the direction of ar. This is the position vector of the point, correct? You can see the position vector is fully in the direction of r. Theta, this is the direction of theta, a theta, is normal to it, it doesn't have a component in its direction. The third coordinate is phi, a phi, which is actually pointing here in this case, inside the beach is going into the beach so i cannot see it the third one so the position vector in spherical coordinates has only one component so i can write the position vector for the point b here as uh, say r is equal to r a r it has only a distance r from the origin and the, all the th the theta and phi information are already contained in the unit vector a r because a r does it change from one point to another some may wonder why do we have to go through the trouble of using spherical coordinate systems. So I wanted to show an example, um, that a practical example that will explain to you why this is the case, why spherical coordinate systems are very handy. This is a, a, an antenna, it was developed in 2013, it's called an S-shaped antenna. So it, it is really a, a layer of metal on an S-shape, maybe a cover, some sort of cover. It's deposited on insulator. So uh, this insulator, it has actually uh, the S-shape on one side. So this is the one side containing the S-shape here. And then on the back side, you can see some ground plane. There is a small, tiny ground area here. It's another piece of metal as well. So it's, it's two layers of metal. 
one of them has an S shape on one side, the other one looks like a small rectangular area, and uh, they are both connected to co a coaxial cable, so this is where the excitation comes from. The, so these are connected to a high frequency source, and the, when, uh, the coaxial cable, as we know, it's very similar to the one that we have in our homes for a TV cable. It has an inner conductor, an outer conductor. The inner conductor is connected to the S-shaped patch, and the outer conductor is connected to the rectangular patch in the back. So this is how the antenna looks like. And when you connect this antenna to, uh, to a high frequency source, it will start to radiate electromagnetic energy. Uh, it will create radiation in some frequencies better than others. Uh, and this is why um, uh, some antennas are preferred over others in certain applications. This one here is an, is an ultra wide band antenna. So it has a very wide band over which it can radiate electromagnetic energy. Now, if we assume that this antenna is the center of the origin and try to see how the electromagnetic waves are, are red, being radiated out of this antenna, you'll see that the, the waves are always propagating in the radial direction pointing outward from the antenna. In, at every point, pick any point in space, then connect a line from the, from the origin, which is the antenna here, to, the, uh, to that origin, to that point, and then this will give you direction of wave propagation. And you will see that the electric field is uh, electric field E, which is shown here at one point, and the magnetic field H, shown at the other point, they are normal to each other, and they are normal to the direction of wave propagation. So you can see the electric field is actually pointing out from the page, the magnetic field is normal to it, and they are both normal to the direction of wave propagation. So and 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 uh, so they actually the three of them form a right a right-handed coordinate system. So E cross H will give you direction of wave propagation. And the H equals direction of wave propagation will give you E. And uh, so on. So this is pretty much what we talked about before. But remember, this direction of propagation changes from one point to another because waves are radiating from the antenna in the radial direction. So for example, in another point here, which is say is this point here, you can see that the, uh, you can see that the direction of wave propagation is a completely different direction. Uh, but still, you have electric field pointing out from the page, magnetic field normal to it. They are both normal direction of wave propagation. So this is a typical example of why spherical coordinates would be very handy. In that case, the origin is the antenna. The electric field is pointing in the phi direction. The, uh, the H is pointing in the uh, theta direction. So if I can define this one here to be Z axis, if you can see this is Z, this angle is theta. Okay, so uh, H here will be in the direction of A theta, and the direction of wave propagation of, will be in the direction of AR. So this is a typical uh, example of why having such components would be very useful. And the good thing about these coordinates, they do change from one point to the other. One word of warning, antennas sometimes um, radiate electric magnetic field which is normal to the page and the electric field which will be in the theta direction. It doesn't matter. Both polarizations are possible, but the direction of wave propagation is in the outward direction. Very similar to the derivation that we did for cylindrical coordinate systems, for spherical coordinate systems, we have to be able to transform, to transform from Cartesian to spherical and from spherical to Cartesian. Uh, I w this diagram to the left is very important, you have to remember it. So for any point B here, which is shown here, you draw a line from the origin to that point, and this will give you the length R. R is, is really the distance from the origin to the point. Rho is the normal distance from that point to the z-axis, so this distance here is Rho. The angle theta, which is shown here, is the angle between R and the z-axis. So we can immediately get in some, some relationship that uh, Rho is equal to R sine theta. So if you project the lens R, R um, uh, on the XY plane, you get Rho. So this Rho here, which is shown here in this diagram, is nothing but R sine theta. Now, because Rho doesn't have, has an angle phi, an angle phi shown here with the x-axis, this means that you can get x and y of the point by projecting Rho. So this means that uh, x is equal to Rho cosine phi, y is equal to Rho sine phi, but Rho is equal to R sine theta. And this will give you this, the three equations here, taking you from the spherical coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. Of course, the z-axis, this distance here is not that difficult to see, that this z-axis is equal to r cosine theta. 
Now, if we need to make transformation the opposite direction, to go from the Cartesian to spherical, R is the distance from the origin, from the, uh, from the zero, zero point to my, my point. So it's equal to square root of uh, Z squared plus rho squared. So, but rho is equal to square root of X squared plus Y squared. So this will give you this relationship here that R is equal to square root X squared plus Y squared. Remember, remember that this triangle here has a right angle, okay? So R is, R is equal to square root Z squared plus rho squared. You substitute for rho. Rho is equal to square root X squared plus Y squared to get this answer. Theta. Theta is this angle here between the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the position, the direction of R, the position vector, and Z. Uh, theta is facing uh, the length rho. And uh, so we can see tan tangent of theta is equal to um, uh, the value that we have here, you can say it is rho over r, or you can simply say that theta is equal to r cosine uh, z, which is this length here, divided by r. So this all coming from this right angle triangle here. So theta will have a cosine, which is equal to z divided by r. Phi is the same phi that we had in cylindrical coordinate systems, it is, it's actually, A phi is, is parallel to the x, y axis, and in that case, y is equal, phi is equal to arc tangent y over x. So this relationship, you, do, you don't have to memorize them, just know how to use them when you need to. So in spherical coordinates, remember, we have r, theta, and phi. r is the distance from the origin, theta is the angle that the position vector makes with the z-axis, and phi is the angle that the projection on the x, y plane makes with the x axis. Okay, and we can take from the x, y, z to the r, theta, and phi, or the other way around from r, theta, and phi to x, y, and z. This figure uh, just summarizes what I have said before. Uh, r, you project it on the x, y, in the x, y plane, you get rho, which is r sine theta. You project rho on the x and y, you get that x is equal to r sine theta cosine phi, which is this one here. You project rho in the y-axis, you get that y is equal to r sine theta sine phi, so y is equal to r sine theta sine phi. Uh, the, and this length here, uh, z, the coordinates equal to r cosine theta. So this will really give you all the information that you need on how to go from uh, spherical to Cartesian. Example here, um, the position vector of a point B in spherical coordinates is 8, 120, and 330 degrees. So I'm here I'm giving you R is equal to 8, theta is equal to 120, and phi is equal to 330. I want you to write the position vector in spherical coordinates, and I want you to obtain the position vector in Cartesian form. As I said earlier, uh, the position vector in spherical coordinates does not have a theta or a phi component, has only an r component, because the line connect, extending from the origin to the location of the point is fully in the direction of r, it's fully in the radial direction. So in this case, this means that the position vector is equal to 8 ar, and all the theta and phi information are included in the unit vector in the direction of r. Now, if you want to take it to Cartesian, there is no problem. We know what's r, we know what is theta, we know what is phi. We apply the transformation uh, between r, theta, and phi to x, y, and z to be able to get the Cartesian coordinates. So if you draw the point here, um, the point you can see, uh, it, it makes an angle theta with the z axis, this angle here. 120 degrees, so it's below the x, y plane. It must be below the x, y plane. And if I project this point on the x, y plane, so I obtain here its projection, I call this projection B dash. This B dash makes an angle phi with the x axis, so if you go all the way around the x axis in the x, y plane, of 330, it's almost a complete round degree, complete, uh, complete turn, minus 30 degrees. So this is, these are really the, uh, the coordinates, and of course, as I said, the position vector is equal to 8 AR, there is no... Uh, theta or phi components. So to apply the transformation, we know that x is equal to r sine theta cosine phi. Theta is 120 degrees, uh, as shown here. Phi is equal to 330. Uh, it's very simple if you draw the, the, the waveform of the sine and cosine. You will know that sine 120 is the same as sine 60. 
and and the cosine uh, 330 the same as cosine 30 um, and uh, I use that sine 60 degrees square root 3 over 2 cosine 30 degrees square root 3 over 2 so if you multiply all this by 8 you get that x is equal to 6 meters okay of course if there are no units I assume it's in meters y uh, the formula for y is that y is equal to rho sine phi and rho is equal to r sine theta so y is equal to r sine theta sine theta sine phi and in that case it's equal to 8 sine 120 degrees sine 330 degrees as shown here in this expression um, you will know that sine 120 um, uh, degrees is the same as uh, um, in this case, if you draw, if you draw the waveform for the sine, you know, just maybe it's helpful if I draw this for you. So if you draw the waveform for the sine, you will see that sine 120 is the same as sine 60. Okay, so it's a square root uh, third, 3 over 2. And the sine 330, if I draw that as well, I, again, I don't do this with the calculator, do it from my memory. 330 is somewhere here. And uh, it is uh, the negative of uh, sine of um, of the sine of uh, th thirty degrees, so it's equal to minus one half. So, uh, so if you multiply this, you get that y is equal to minus two square root three. Z is equal to r cosine theta, uh, a which is eight cosine one hundred twenty degrees. Cosine one hundred twenty degrees is equal to um, minus one half. Uh, again, you can try to draw the cosine. Uh, waveform to see that and uh, you get z of course minus 4 and as I mentioned the previous slide z is negative because the point is below the uh, the xy plane theta is equal to 120 okay so this is these are the xy and z coordinates and we now know the position vector is equal to x a x y a y plus z a z so it is 6 in the ax direction minus 2 square root 3 in the y direction minus 4 in the z direction Here, one more example, we want to write the function f of r and theta, e to the minus r sine theta and Cartesian coordinates. This may expre express the, the form of an electric field or uh, some field, it decays with r, so as you move away from the origin, the, the wave becomes weaker, which is a characteristic of most waves. As you move away from the antenna, the wave becomes weaker. And it has sine theta profile. Sine theta profile means it is very strong when theta is equal to 90 degrees. And the theta, I may, I may not have mentioned that, but theta goes only from 0 to pi. So uh, if you try to draw this one here, I will draw it in the... Um, I'm sorry, my handwriting is not very steady, so I will draw it here, say, in the uh, Z um, uh, X plane, say. Okay, so if you try to draw sine theta, so at angle theta is equal to 0 in the Z direction, it is 0, the function is 0. When theta is 90, it's, it's a peak. So it looks something like this. This is how this function looks like. And then, of course, when theta goes from 0 to 180 in the negative direction, minus in the negative Z direction, the function becomes 0 again. So this field or th this electric field or whatever, it becomes very strong in the X direction and it's, uh, it's weak, very weak, zero value, has very zero value in the z direction. Transforming this function to the x and y and z is pretty simple, uh, because r is equal to square root x squared plus y squared. We know also that sine theta is equal to um, uh, rho, over, uh, rho over r, sine theta here is equal to rho over r, and this is, we mentioned this before, we mentioned the rho is equal to r sine theta. And uh, in that case, it is square root x squared plus y squared, this is rho, divided by r, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, as shown here, okay? So if you divide these two, you can put this expression for this function. You can see how the expression is very complicated in the x, y, and z domain, the Cartesian coordinates, but it's very simple in the r uh, and r, theta, and phi in, in spherical coordinates. So this is why this is, uh, these coordinates are very useful in some applications that have spherical uh, symmetry, where the wave is getting weaker along the radial direction from the origin, and the fields may be changing as well as a function of theta or of phi.